you see like the best part of the menu. Okay. Uh, that's why it's highlighted because my carrot cake is super. <laughs> Oh, there we go. See, so the keys keep the pressure Stability. on the wound. Yeah, yeah. that's the ER. Oh, <laughs> yo, can I do that again? Yeah, it worked out really wow. well. See, I should just, I should just be a heart surgeon. It's the same exact thing, right? Yeah, and you want your heart operated on <laughs> like this? Tomatoes are red. Hearts are red. So guys, if you haven't noticed already, we have a special guest with us. This is our friend Kevin. What's up? I wish that people could see the back of your jacket, Kevin. So the front is... Well, the back is just a bigger version of the thing on the front. Yeah. Hmm. Did I say Nike in Chinese? It's, um, it's a kanji for... So it's actually Japanese. I think it's, it means anti-government. Which is ridiculous because it's like Nike, which is pretty corporate as this. But it's, it is Nike though? Nike doesn't make it. Okay. So these are really popular these days. Yeah, so Kevin, like, I know that you're really into fashion. How do you know, how do you like find where all these trends are? People I follow on Instagram, um, subreddits, um, following forums online. It's just like something I do in my free time every day, like a little bit. This I is like fun. way more colorful than I usually am. It, it actually really is. I remember when I first met you, I was just like, uh, within the first week, I thought the way you dress is very, oh, Rick Owens. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That uh, ish? Rick Owens? Okay. Who's Rick Owens? I think the simplest way to describe him is, is if you took the punk aesthetic and made it like more like couture. So Kevin has these, I don't know if they're like pants, sweatpants kind of, and then oh. the drawstrings are really long and they're white. So they're, they're pants that are modeled after the Fear of God style pants, mm -hmm. which have the aesthetic where the drawstrings are super long and then they have like zippers at the legs. I also have a lot of joggers and stuff too, because I'm a basic bee when it comes to like street fashion, but I like it, I love it. I noticed that a lot of the fashion that you wear is more like the sort of street punk, sporty, like sporty street punk. I like... <laughs> if you were a Spice Girl, that would be your name. <laughs> okay, this is my theory about the Spice Girls. Just like in Sex and the City, how each character is an archetype mm -hmm. of a woman, right? So every woman has a Miranda, a Carrie, a Samantha, etc. Every girl has a Spice Girl. Every single Spice Girl, that is an archetype that every girl has inside her. So everybody has a little scary spice in her. Every boy or girl has a scary spice, a baby spice, a sporty spice. It's just different spicinesses come out depending different on... Different spiciness? Different spicinesses come out depending on your mood that day. Hmm. By the way, we're at Sussie Solo. Did you ever like different clothes, Kevin? Were you always like this kind of style? Huh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what did you wear before? Um, man, it's changed so much. Were you always interested in fashion even as a little kid or did something happen in your formative years where you were just like, now I really care about how I dress? Um, I think it started off with just being self-aware of what I look like and that happened when I entered middle school. So before then I had always been quite chubby when I was little. <laughs> I always finished last in a mile. My father didn't call me by my name for a couple years. She just called me Chubby. <laughs> like Chubby, come here, right? Wait, in Korean? In English. Like in plain English, like Chubby. Like in America? Yeah, and like, like in Chubby. Front, in front of family friends, just like Chubby. Like. Oh my god, that's cute though. I guess, I mean, like, I'm not scarred or anything. I'm not scored, but... <laughs> <laughs> and then you cry every night. <laughs> uh, but then I had this moment, I guess when I was in middle school, when you finally become more aware of yourself. I, so I put myself on a diet, so exercising. And then I think with that, became more of an interest in fashion, which didn't really pick up until high school. Because before then, you know, kids want to fit in, right? So I think until then, up to that point, I had just been following trends. But in the 90s, you know, how like frosting your tips was a thing. Yes, <laughs> such a boy Asian band thing, thing yeah. right? Um, and then I, I always tell the story. <laughs> so it was my turn to jump on the bandwagon. And then I wanted to frost my tips blonde, right? Because I had spike hair at the time anyways. And then, I went to a salon, this Korean ajuma, this older Korean lady who did my hair because, you know, she's someone from church that my mom knew. <laughs> By the time it was all done and said with, my hair was actually orange. 
-hmm. and not blonde. And then she, I, I kind of freaked out and she said, no, 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 it's fine. It'll become blonde later. Okay, and it never did. So my, I think my fifth grade yearbook picture is just like my tan jumbo face from like being outside all the time to black to like orange. So I looked like someone just like dipped me <laughs> into some like carrot juice, like flipped me out. <laughs> Skateboarding was also a big thing at the time, mm -hmm. and even though I was really shitty at skateboarding, I tried to like follow the trend too and kind of dress bad here, which is weird because it's almost like I made a complete circle because now I'm into streetwear, which is heavily influenced by skateboard culture. My friend she's me in high school because I was still struggling with like what's cool, what's not, what what is my sense of fashion. So my attempt was to come to school like in, in the one sports jacket that I had. And I would wear it really often, despite whether it matched or not. And I would wear like ties, like loosely done, even over like a t-shirt. But they were wondering like, why are you wearing this stuff? I'm like, oh, you know, I just wanted to be like a little dressier. Like I was made fun of for it. I like that though. I think that's very brave because it seems as though in society, straight dudes. Um, they have to kind of choose. I know a lot of straight guys who, it's not until they're in their late 20s they finally feel comfortable enough to start dressing. Right, or like to like wear pink or... That's me now. Ah. Uh, but when you're younger and you have a bunch of friends, you know, I feel like young guys, they throw around the word fag. More than just being like a homophobic slur, I feel like it's a misogynistic slur because it's saying that you're not a man, you're a woman. And that's the worst thing a man could be womanly because what do women like women like fashion so why are you being like a woman which is the worst thing a man can be i think in the american context that is on point for sure i very lightly say that i was bullied because i know people in much worse situations i i feel like bullied maybe too strong but teased for sure like mm -hmm. me to the point feeling uncomfortable but then i discovered rock music mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's when all of a sudden i was wearing band t-shirts all the time mm -hmm. albeit very emo, poppy kind of bands like Yellow Card, Taking Back Sunday. Taking Back Sunday. And then my hair started getting really long to the point where it got down to my shoulders. Wow. Yeah, that was all in high school. When I was into rock music walls, I would just wear like super tight panties. What about studded belts? And like a wallet chain? Yeah. Were you the fashionista of your crew? Uh, me? No, actually, at the time, I was uh, really good friends with this other Korean American, and I was influenced by him a lot because I thought his sense of fashion was really on point. So I copied him a lot. There was even um, I remember our high school had a had a dance where it was like a twin dance. I don't know if you guys ever had that thing where you dress the same thing as like your best friend. Wow, what? Is we that never had twin dances. Uh, yeah, we had that, and so like I remember this is back when Anchor Blue was a bigger brand. And then we bought like the same shorts and t-shirt and it was like all oh, like turquoise and black and I thought that was like one of the coolest things I had ever worn in my life. <laughs> and because it was my best friend at the time so I thought like oh this is so cool. That the uh, Korean American? Yeah. So he influenced you. Because I thought he was cool, yeah. Which is I think how most teenagers develop their style. Flat out plagiarism and copying and David Bowie even said I'm not going to wear anything or take anything unless it's worthy of stealing. And so he was kind of doing a nod, nod, wink, wink to the fact that all his style choices, somebody else wore it first, but he took it and he made it better. You know, that's uh, interesting because we are talking about fashion today. And then one of my favorite designers is Yoji Yamamoto. Mm. I'm actually wearing his shoes right now. Legend in the industry, right? And he, he's been quoted, and I'm going to butcher this quote, but one of his words of advice to like young designers is to copy, 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 copy until you find yourself. Mm -hmm. And for me, uh, especially having, having started sociology in undergrad, whatever that means, right? Um, from that, I've, gotten, I've been influenced to the point where I subscribe to the belief that who we are is 100% uh, the result of how we were brought up, where we were brought up, who we've been influenced by. Like, we're a product of the media and our friends and everyone around us in our family, right? But that's okay. And because of that, you will copy other things and keep copying. And the, I think one of the routes to pursue happiness 
is to not worry so much about what society is telling you to do, what other people are telling you to do, is to find what you truly like, stick with it, find out why it makes you happy, and then reproduce the happiness. I actually subscribe to the idea that the way that one dresses is actually just as important as self-development. Like, you know how people, they always say, why do you care so much about the way you look? Why do you spend so much time doing makeup, doing clothes, all that stuff? And I'm like, to neglect your outer self, I think is in a way sort of neglecting a huge part of what it means to sort of live in modern society. What do you feel is so important about, I guess, representing who you are on the inside, on the outside? Well, because to do otherwise would be suppressing your happiness is to express yourself. It is inherently human to want to express yourself. Confidence speaks for itself, right? Yeah. I feel confident now, like, whatever I wear and walk out the door these days, I 100% like, this is exactly what I want to look like. Why? Which I never had before. Okay, so you have like that one style that you're always at? Because I feel like, for me, I like to change things up. Like, one day I'm going to be wearing all black. One day I might wear something like this. One day I might wear something white. Like, I feel like... Me, well, you do have a style, Jeannie, but yeah. a certain style that you do have. Mm -hmm. I see it too. Yeah. I know. I yeah. We all have a style, even if we think we don't have a style. Not having a style is a style as well. Like you mentioned Yoji Yamamoto. What other fashion looks, designers, pop culture icons do you think have influenced you? Uh, maybe directly and indirectly. I'm just gonna throw this out here now, Kanye West. Um, I'm not gonna hate. Kanye West is talented. He's super talented. But I'll, I'll be straight up right now. I don't love his music. It's great. He has great tracks. Don't hate on me. You know, everyone's free to like what they like. But um, even if I'm not totally in love with him as a person or his music, I can't deny the influence that he's had on the rest of the world. What about Kanye style did you gravitate towards? Uh, I, it's so hard to say because so much of street wear is influenced by what kind of made popular. And so like things that I wear that are influenced by him, uh, like the way like and this and Justin Bieber dresses this way too. Like you know how these days, uh, for example, a lot of people are wearing cut up jeans again, right? Which hasn't been a thing since like American Eagle was bigger. Remember back in like 2000s where people were wearing distressed jeans. That's a big thing now, and that's partially because Bieber and Kanye are wearing that, right? Or have been wearing it for the past couple years, so they're big again. Shirts that aren't above, that end above waist, but end lower or scoop down. You see that, right? Blaring, that guy's wearing his face. That is influenced by Bieber Kanye. When I think that of aesthetic. Kanye, I think of like that longer shirt, and then the skinny pants. Like the skinny pants that are kind of like ruffled on the bottom a little bit. Mm. Think what about like, that? Shirts with holes. That's all popular today partially because of people like Kanye or people of Kanye's status who are influencing. So all the brands, streetwear brands you're seeing, if you want Instagram, you just go on any of the popular like feeds, even something as big as like Hypebeast, right? right? And you scroll through the fits, those are all in some way influenced by people like Kanye. That, that's the, the aesthetic now that most guys are wearing for streetwear, you know, like thinner, like fitting pants with the bigger baggier tops, that has been influenced by Kanye. So, whether or not how much I like him as a person is irrelevant to the influence that he's undoubtedly having on the way I dress. So I'm guessing that once you came to Korea though, your style started to evolve a little bit. It's more <laughs> Korean. But Korean people are very fashion forward. Uh, that being said, uh, you know how it's very human nature to adapt mm -hmm. to your environment. So when I first came here, I became very floppy very fast. Button up shirts, Dress shoes, tight jeans, that's how I used to wear. So the very preppy Korean look. I, I wore that for a long time. Like the clean cut, um, smart look. The way the pants are coming up, uh, that's trendy these days, right? Which I hated when I first came to Korea was, uh, you know, the high water look where the pants are like where above the ankle? Yeah, they call it um, ankle, they call the ankle bone like a peach. <laughs> That's a thing because everyone shows their, all the guys show their ankles, their pants. I, I hated that when I first came here. Yeah? Yeah. I liked it. I thought it looked attractive.
Oh, I'm always rolling up my pants and stuff, but that's also a reflection of uh, what's popular in streetwear these days, which is the joggers, which will do the pinching for you, or to like pin roll your jeans, which is like to grab the extra fabric, mm -hmm. pinch it, and roll it, so it looks like it's tailored to fit. Oh, I feel like we wear our pants the same way. Oh, yeah, it's always a couple of them. Yeah. yeah.